Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is The Piracy Show. Now, we have an anniversary sale coming up, which technically we get another one round about the end of June. But every time this comes up, people start to look at their hangers and they start to look at all the ships that have been released into Star Citizen, all the ships that are yet to be released, and they start to think about what do they really want? Or more importantly, what do they really need in Star Citizen? And that's why I, I really do, I like these anniversary sales because there are certain times during the year when, you know, FOMO hits us and we go, oh, oh, I, I gotta get it, I gotta get it. That's, that's a great idea, I gotta get it. But then, as the year goes on and we get used to Star Citizen's cycles and all of a sudden the ship is on the pipeline and then it's out and then it's back in again and things like that. When we've had time to kind of cool, our, cool ourselves off a little bit, we start to think very seriously about what we've purchased. The anniversary sale comes at a decent time that allows us to kind of go, okay, what you know what are what is important to us and i i use this expression when i'm talking to people and i'm trying to explain the difference between the things that you need and the things that you want and i always say to you know i say it to bosses i say it to people who work for me i say it to people in my own family you know i say what are your must-haves your would be nices and if dreams came true those three categories categorize everything in those three categories if you have your must-haves then you can think about your would-be nices and if you've got most of your would-be nices maybe you can look at a few things from the if dreams came true pile right as you kind of explore your hangar in star citizen there's probably a lot of ships that you've picked up over the years that you kind of look at and you say well you know, th th this was a bit of a FOMO purchase. You know, you start to regret it after a while and you think, ah, I don't think that I'm really going to be doing all that much of that. What you really want to break down, break everything down to is your experience in playing the game up till now. What have you enjoyed and what have you not enjoyed? What do you think is heading in the right direction? What do you think is heading in the wrong direction? Now, that's not a jab at the developers, but rather also a bit of, you know, your personal taste, your perspective, because you might think you're going to like something and then all of a sudden it turns out, nah, I don't really like it. You know, you walk into a restaurant, you think, oh, this place is going to be great. And then you get the food and you're not exactly what I thought it was going to be. And the same with professions in Star Citizen. You, you might look at a profession like mining, let's say, and think, oh, that's where I want to be. I want to be a miner in Star Citizen, only to find out a profession maybe not as rewarding or as enjoyable as you thought it was going to be. But then again, oh, hey, here's bounty hunting, things like that. As you're kind of playing through Star Citizen, it, I mean, it's kind of an upside to the protra <laughs> this protracted development time is that you have a lot of time to change you know change things up move things around and test out different ideas and different notions and maybe kick open a few doors that had things been a lot faster you wouldn't have been able to kick open and often with the opening of a new mmo you you really don't have the the time that you kind of wish you did sometimes to make sure that you have the best start in that MMO. And I'm not talking about, oh, time-wise efficiency, level one to 60 in under two hours using my secret method, blah, 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 blah. But more about making the right personal choices to make that experience enjoyable for yourself. And it's almost, <laughs> it's, it's always true that as you kind of go through any any game like that, as you move through it, you kind of think back to what you believed in the beginning and sometimes you kind of laugh at it and you go, 
uh, I really wish I had just done this from the start. I w really wish I knew that from the start. And this unique situation that Star Citizen is in, it allows us to kind of watch the horizon and wait for that mile marker that tells us, okay, now it counts and now we can go forward. And right now our biggest responsibility, apart from helping develop the game, which is of course giving feedback, but part of that is also figuring out what we want to do in the game. So when we do hit that mile marker, we hit it, you know, we hit the ground running. And this is kind of when you have to look at your ships in Star Citizen and start saying, okay, now here comes the anniversary sale. What has passed the test over the last year? And what is disappointing? Or what is yet to be released into the game, but the mechanics surrounding it don't sound all that good, right? Now, another thing that can kind of happen sometimes and it's something to kind of look out for and be very very careful around is that perhaps over the years you've picked up you know a number of ships and all of a sudden we come to the anniversary sale and there's the polaris there's the perseus there's the nautilus and you're thinking if i just melt all of these i can get this one big ship and that'll be my ship you know blah 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 and that's not always the way either. You have to think about Star Citizen realistically and look at other games that to a certain degree compare in the way that certain mechanics work and how players interact with those mechanics. EVE Online is a great example. EVE Online has a certain realistic inventory system. Everything is kept at certain stations and certain bases. Many players over the years have acquired quite a fleet of starships that exist in extremely diverse locations all over the universe. But bringing them together is a real pain in the ass. Now thinking that you can consolidate everything into one mega starship, one kind of big if dreams came true starship, might initially sound like a good idea, but then you have to think about the practicality of navigating around this universe and that all your activities are probably not going to take place in the same area or even in the same star system. If you think about having a money-making ship, a combat ship, and a traveling ship, having three main ships, let's say for instance your combat ship is a retaliator, your money-making ship is a reclaimer, and your traveling ship is a corsair, those are probably all going to be in different areas. You might go somewhere else to salvage, but combat might be located over in another system. And then exploring the rest of the game and traveling in between, that could be your Corsair taking you to those locations. It may not be just consolidating into one big ship, but consolidating into three very solid ships. That could, you know, that could be a much better idea than more or less betting everything on one ship that we haven't seen in the game yet. It's it's an unfortunate truth that when when people kind of make these big bets on this single thing, they often don't have a plan B or even conceive of the need for a plan B. And you can see this when you, you talk to people about so many things in life. Very few people actually confront themselves confront themselves with the question, what if I'm wrong? What is my plan B? Oh no, this'll work. This this'll this'll totally work. This is how it's going to go. It's gonna go exactly as I've imagined it. And when you think about your life experience, you realize how rare that things actually turn out exactly the way you imagine them. And Star Citizen will probably be no different. So what if you're wrong? What is your plan B? So dumping everything into one ship, not the brightest strategy out there. But there is a certain truth also to, if you're always second guessing yourself, paralysis through analysis, that is, that is also true. But it's good to have a couple of ideas, a few options out there. And there's the one good thing about having such a bloat of starships in Star Citizen is generally in most categories, there's a pretty solid ship in there 
that works out that's in that more reasonably priced range. And so now is the time to kind of open up some new doors, maybe kick open some different possibilities. And just remember that if you do f find yourself in a ship that you don't like, you might be able to get out of it at some point during a sale in the future, you know, get rid of it and then use your buyback to get back into the ship that you had before or potentially six months from now with the next anniversary sale that's not an anniversary sale, get into something different. And so that's kind of the matrix that I pass my ship buying through. That's generally how I look at acquisitions within Star Citizen. And I have to say that at this point, after, <laughs> after quite some time <laughs> messing around with the ships in Star Citizen, I, I feel that I really have settled into a pretty good groove. And I have some very solid ships in my lineup. I have a plan B and I even have a plan C half of a plan D too, maybe, but I have a lot of options, a lot of doors that are open to me. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it's, it's actually kind of a good feeling. Yeah. There was a time when every ship that I owned was actually in the game and I moved some things around and that's no longer the case, but I'm pretty happy with where my fleet is at. And there's probably a lot of people out there who have been through this same exercise over the years and who have reached the same conclusion or have reached the same, you know, the same stage in uh, Star Citizen, personal development, whatever you want to call it, but who have reached enlightenment, shall we say. But for those of you who are just starting out and you know, every time there's a sale, you're freaking out. Oh man, what if this is good? No oh, man, what if that's good? This is the this is that time of renewal when you can kind of move things around and you can kind of set things back to the beginning and just start asking yourself some really tough questions. What do I really need? What do I want? And what would be, you know, the dream come true? And maybe the dream come true is something that you aim for after the game get, goes live. And the most important things you really want to cover are first and foremost, what do I need? And then what would be nice? And then go after your dreams. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.